The best remedy and course of, a, of action, after a calamity, is to say with sincerity, Verily, we belong to Allah, and indeed to Him is our return. This means that we are all from Allah's creation, that we belong to Him, that we are in His kingdom, and that we shall return to Him. The beginning is with Him, and the return is to Him. The whole affair is in His hand, is in the hands of Allah. An Arab poet said, My own soul that possesses things is itself departing, so why should I cry over a possession that it leaves when it leaves? Allah, the Exalted, said, Everything will perish save his face. What, whatsoever is on it, the earth will perish. Verily, you, O Muhammad, will die, and verily, they too will die. If you were shocked to learn that your house burned down, that your son died, or that your life saving were lost, what would you do from this moment? Prepare yourself mentally, trying to escape or elude what is decreed is a fruitless endeavour that brings mo that brings no benefit. Be satisfied with what has been decreed. Acknowledge your reality and earn your reward. You have no other poor option. Sure, you might say that there is another option, but it is a base one, and I warn you to say, stay clear from it. It is to complain and grumble, and to lose your composure by flaring into rage and, and, and anger. When can this attitude and behaviour possibly accomplish? You will earn anger from your Lord, and people will revile you. Furthermore, what you have lost will not return, and your calamity will not be lightened for you. Let him stretch out a rope to the ceiling, and let him strangle himself. Then let him see whether his plan will remove that whereat he rages. Don't be sad sooner or later. Everything in this world perishes. Death is the end of, all, of us all. The oppressor and the oppressed, the mighty and the feeble, the rich and the poor. Your death is no novelty, nations before have gone and nations after will perish. Related that in the north there is a graveyard with 1,000 kings buried in it. At the entrance of this graveyard is a sign that reads, The kings ask the dirt about them and about the great leaders. They are all bones now. A cause for wonder, wonder, which it is the forgetfulness of a of man and how he remains heedless of death, the menace of which hangs over him day and night. Man deludes himself into thinking that he is immortal on this earth. O mankind, fear your Lord and be dutiful to him verily. The earthquake of the hour of, of judgment is a terrible thing. Draws near for mankind their reckoning while they turn away in heedlessness. When Allah destroyed a nation and wiped out the transgressing people, he, the Almighty, said, Can you find a single one of them, or hear even a whisper of them? Depression leads to misery. The newspaper Al-Muslimun reported that in 1990, two million people suffered from depression around the world. Depression is a sickness that has quietly weakened havoc on mankind, humankind. It does not distinguish between people from the west or east, or between the rich and the poor. It is a malady that attacks all kinds of people, and may in certain cases lead to suicide. Depression does not recognize or stand in awe of wealth, nobility or power. However, it does stay aloof from the believer. Some statistics indicate that 200 million people are now suffering from depression. The findings of a recent study showed that at least one out of every ten people has at one time or another suffered from this dangerous sickness. The danger is not restricted to adults. Even the young are now sus susceptible to depression. Even the fetus in the womb is at risk, for a depressed mother can turn to 
abortion as a means of escaping from her problems. Depression may lead to suicide and to and do not kill yourselves and do not throw yourselves into destruction. Reports were leaked that former President Donald Reagan fell victim to a state of severe depression. His situation was attributed to his being over 70 years of age while still having to face tremendously stressful problems and to his having undergone per periodic operations wheresoever you may be death will overtake you even if you are in fortresses built up strong and high many famous people and in particular those in the arts suffer from depression the main reason if not the only reason for poet Saleh Jaheen's death was indeed depression it has also been said that Napoleon Bonaparte, while still in exile, died in a state of depression, and that their souls shall depart, die, while they are disbelievers. Not too long ago, a German woman killed three of her children. It later became clear that her reason for doing this horrible act stemmed from her state of depression, since she loved her children a great deal. She feared that they would have to go through the pain and hardship that she had undergone in her life. Thus she decided to give them comfort and to save each one of them from the difficulties and vi vicissitudes of life. After murdering them, she took her own life. The number is issued by the World Health Organization indicate the severity of the situation in 1973. It reported that 3% of the world's population was afflicted with depression. The figures increased dramatically and in 1978 the figure was up to 5%. What might come as a surprise to some is that some studies have, have, now, have shown that one of out of every four Americans suffer from depression during the conference of mental disorder that was held in Chicago. In 1981, the chairman of the com conference announced, announced that 100 million people in the world suffer from depression. What might come as a surprise to some is that most of them were from developed countries. Other studies have even proclaimed a number of 200 million. See they not that they are tried once or twice every year with different kinds of calamities, disease, famine. It is said that the intelli intelligent person is not he who is able to increase his profits, but he who transforms his losses into profits. There did Allah give you one distress after another by way of requital to teach you not to grieve for that which you which had escaped you the meaning of his verse is that things that are over and finished with should not be de what does this mean? dwelt dwelt upon since doing so leading only to anxiety worry and wastage of time when having to no when having no work to do one can fill his time with many useful activities. These are some such activities, doing good deeds, helping others, visiting the sick, visiting the graveyard to remember and reflect on one's final destination, volunteering in the mosque, participating in charitable work, doing physical exercise, visiting loved ones, organizing one's affairs, and lending aid to the old, the poor and the weak, verily, you are returning towards your Lord with your deeds and actions, good or bad, a sure returning. An Arab poet said, A generous deed is singular in its sweet taste and in its beautiful appearance. Look through any history book and you will find among its pages stories of pain, pri privation and misery. An Arab poet said, Read history as it is filled with morals a nation will sink if it knows nothing of its annals and all that 
that we relate to you of the news of the messengers is in order that we may make strong and firm your heart thereby. Indeed, in their stories there is a lesson for men of understanding. So relate the stories, perhaps, that they may reflect, or oh, may Allah be pleased with him. Said, my goal now remains to find enjoyment in the different things that have been decreed for me. A statement that indicates his contentment with Allah's decree for him. In the span of one year, eight of Abu Ta'at's wave sons died during a plague, and what do you suppose he said? He kept faith, was resigned, and sub submitted to Allah's decree, saying, 